Hi and welcome everyone. My name is Menina Chao and I'm a community advocate, uh, part of the SAP community team, your host for today's call. Um, before we get started, a few housekeeping notes. You are very warmly welcome to already post your questions in Q&A. You can raise them during uh, the presentation in that, um, in that window, and we will have a reserve time at the end where you can also, of course, uh, raise your hand when we unmute you. Um, yeah, that was so far our housekeeping notes. I'm very warmly welcoming Saurab Kotari, who is um, yeah for product strategy here uh, from the SAP Procurement Solutions um, about the topic source to pay. Optimized procurement with intelligent integrated processes is the topic of today's SAP community call. And yeah, very looking forward to hear from you, Saurabh. I think you have great experience, I think more than 17 years in the procurement area. So I think it's good to get started with, with your insights and your presentation. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, a very warm welcome to all of you uh, from my end as well. Um, Thanks, thanks for joining the session. Um, we'll walk you through uh, the details and updates around the source to pay as one of the sub processes within the intelligent enterprise architecture. And uh, we'll also make sure that we give enough details and uh, updates right around the resources that you can access at the, towards the end of the call. Um, thanks again for inviting me uh, to the call and letting me present. Um, so. Let's let me give a quick background. I'm Saurabh Kotari. I'm part of Solution Strategy team, uh, responsible for um, source to pay uh, as as the subtopic. Having said that, let's deep dive into the presentation quickly. Uh, legal disclaimer: uh, a lot of information that we are uh, sharing is is already available for our customers, but there are some pieces of information wherein it is more of our future strategy or roadmap and directions which are subject to change. Uh, so a standard legal disclaimer from that point of view. Uh, we'll cover today's session in four or five sub bullets, right? Uh, one is we'll go through the business challenges uh, that we have been speaking or, or understanding from our various customers and partners. Uh, we'll look into how do we tie those business challenges with what uh, a technology platform or technology provider like SAP can help with uh, for the organizations. We'll deep dive into sub-process specific to source to pay. Uh, we'll talk about the outlook uh, going forward for rest of 2021 as well as beyond. And then we'll end it up with summary and key takeaways. Of course, there will be enough time uh, at the end for Q&A. Uh, so I'll be happy to uh, take any questions or queries from your end as well. So, as, as we start, right? So as we speak to more and more customers, as we understand the digital transformation journeys of our customers, right? What we have um, realized is there are few buckets or few uh, wherein we can bucket the challenges uh, from our customers or from different organizations, right? One of them is staying ahead of the game and always providing the exceptional customer experience, right? Uh, which means you need to understand the demand from your customers as well as continuously deliver to cater to that demand. This is definitely one of the key asks from all the organizations, right? Whether it is related to source to pay or any other process, but that remains a major uh, ask or uh, driving factor for all the customers. The other one is employee engagement and productivity, right? So it, we need to make sure that everybody, right? Whether it's employees, partners, uh, trading partners or service providers who are our who are part of our ecosystem, they have the tools and processes in place um, so that they don't end a redundant task, right? Wherever possible, if we can have the activities automated, right? Uh, that's the ask. It is also one of the key factors on to engage the next gen of resources within an organization. The third, we've seen this over a period of last one, one and a half year with COVID, uh, with Suez Channel, right? The supply chain stability. So in terms of proactively understanding the risks uh, in the supply chain and making sure we have a stable supply chain with all the insights uh, available for making sure that we can take the actions. While doing all this, right, we also need to make sure that we are controlling the cost, right? And it uh, to deliver the bottom line impact, right? So we need to make sure that 
we are not uh, spending uh, right um, so, uh, and and in and make sure that we also cater to all the challenges that we uh, have to the other one in the space of source to pay predominantly is also figuring out how to engage the external workforce right ensuring compliance improving quality of engagement while reducing the cost uh, is one key factor that has been uh, coming up a lot these days and ultimately, while we do this, we need to do this driving sustainable practices. We need to have a greater social impact. We need to make sure that across our value chain, right, uh, we have sustainable practices in place, right? We, we make sure that the climate uh, 21, the carbon footprint, and all of the factors are also part of our processes as we, as we cater to this end-to-end uh, -end business process. Okay, having said that, what is the challenge today that we have heard, right, is there are various siloed applications, right? Even if I look within source to pay, right, there are multiple applications that have, that cater to an end-to-end -end process, which creates the disconnect. The other point is, even if those, those applications are integrated, those are integrated with the approach of transactions, right? It's more transaction driven. I can have one, document flowing from an application to other, but that's it, right? We are looking at it, the scope of it is more transaction driven and not a complete business process integration or not a process driven approach, right? In terms of integration. When this happens, right? The user experience across various applications is obviously inconsistent or disconnected, right? Which means you end up spending a lot of time in enabling your teams making sure right, they're trained enough on each and every application to cater to an end-to-end -end process. If we look at this, the challenges, right, the other one is having the visibility, right, in terms of analytics, in terms of insights, in terms of recommendations, right? Once we have multiple applications, we tend to lose those insights or common ground uh, in terms of getting the, the visibility across all the solutions. The time to value is, is also high, right? Obviously uh, with scattered applications, managing all those applications and um, the siloed data, which resides in each and every application. The integration efforts are high uh, to bring together all the data and even different applications have different domain models, right? So uh, that makes it even more uh, difficult to bring it together. So as we say this, right, procurement is at the center of, of the digital transformation for many of our organizations. As businesses need more, more from procurement teams, obviously procurement teams need more continuity and integration, right? They rely a lot on technology platforms uh, to make sure that they can meet all the business challenges. And how do we do it, right? So if we look at SAP, right, we have rolled this um, intelligent enterprise framework a few years back, uh, which typically caters to all the sub-processes. Um, SAP has varied SAP applications and acquisitions over a period of last 10 years, wherein all the processes from demand to supply to manufacturing to finance are catered. Um, if we look at all the applications, uh, they can be at a high level bucketed into four sub-processes. Either it's lead to cash, design to operate, source to pay, and recruit to retire. Now, what we are aiming towards with, with all the innovations and development that we are doing as part of uh, SAP innovation journey is to make sure that we deliver end-to-end -end processes for our customers, irrespective of how many applications within SAP are involved to deliver that end-to-end -end process. Obviously, we are taking the best of suit here uh, from the best of breed um, uh, developments that we have done in-house or the acquisitions over last um, multiple years. So we'll deliver end-to-end -end processes uh, for a particular sub-process area. For example, here it is source to pay. So we'll make sure that we have end-to-end -end processes catering to multiple source to pay aspects for an organization. How it is being done is obviously with the intelligent suit. Now intelligent suit for respect to source to pay uh, comprises of multiple SAP applications, whether it is SAP S4 HANA, SAP Ariba, SAP Field Glass. In case of um, direct spend, we also have IBP in, in play and so on and so forth, right? So we bring together all the applications and deliver an end-to-end -end process there. 
when it comes to specific industries, we will have enabled the, the platform in such a way that the partners, the customers, the third party solutions can build on top of um, the end-to-end -end processes that have been delivered to cater to specific industry needs. All this is being done, uh, right, with the foundation, which is one is business technology platform, uh, and I'll talk about it in a bit on the next slide, uh, as well as now, apart from the end-to-end -end processes that happen within an organization, how do you really connect to the trading partners or multiple ecosystem players, right, outside the organization? So ERP caters typically to, to an environment within an organization. Now, we are also taking it beyond and making sure that all your trading partners, whether it is on the customer side, which is demand side or the supply side, are connected to each other. And that's, that's what we do with SAP Business Network. Uh, which was recently launched uh, during Safar. Uh, we also have experience management factors. While the processes are being executed, we know what is happening within the systems. But with experience management, we would also come to know why certain things are happening within the system. So we need to get the real-time feedback from our from internal stakeholders, external stakeholders on why certain things are not working well uh, so that we can take uh, proactive um, measures. Uh, while we do all this, we, we do it with sustainability as, as a common uh, factor uh, across an end-to-end -end process. So it's embedded uh, within the processes rather than uh, looking at it as a separate CSR activity um, right uh, outside, outside the end-to-end -end processes that the company operates with. Okay, so coming back to the same uh, source-to-pay processes, but how they are delivered right now. Now, SAP integration over last like multiple years right since acquisition of sap ariba or sap field glass right we have always delivered integration that connect sap ecc system or sap s4 system to this uh, to other sap applications um, as i said right most of the transaction application integrations were focused on transactions but with, as we heard more from the customers right about different user experience different way of integrations um, to connect multiple systems, right? And the time and effort that a customer spends in getting up and running uh, with a certain process. Uh, this is where uh, all our work that is being done on business technology platform helps, right? Wherein we are delivering the end-to-end -end processes, but with a complete business process integration. So when I say that, now all the work that we have done in terms of integration, now we are also making sure that we deliver integrations with adopting to certain common qualities, we call them as suit qualities. Um, for example, right, we should have a consistent experience or a look and feel for our customers or end users when they execute an end-to-end -end process. Now for executing an end-to-end -end process, if I have to go from uh, S4 screen to Ariba screen to Filga screen, right, uh, the look and feel, uh, the taxonomy, um, the, the actions, right, buttons, and then what they do, right, in each application should be same. So this is being catered to by with, with seamless user experience. Uh, and, and, and various other suit qualities that are mentioned here, I'm, I'm also going to go through uh, all of them in, in a bit more details, right, uh, if not a lot, uh, and, and we'll talk about each one of them as we, as we proceed, okay? Now, coming, and drilling, coming back to source to pay and drilling it down, right? So now we now know the concept on what is intelligent enterprise strategy or framework on how we are going to deliver the end-to-end -end processes. So if you look at source to pay, right? Source to pay as a, a area is divided into four major buckets. Uh, one is source and contract, uh, which is on the upstream side of the business process in terms of identifying a customer, onboarding a supplier, uh, sourcing the needs, right, and contracting with the supplier. The other one is plan and forecast, which is majorly focused in this in this uh, space with respect to direct spend, uh, wherein uh, we have capabilities around planning and forecasting with the suppliers or trading partners before uh, the execution comes into picture. Then we have buy and deliver, right, which is all about end-to-end uh, -end procurement process, uh, whether it is for uh, uh, indirect goods or direct goods, uh, which starts with requisitions, orders, good receipts, and 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 deliveries. 
and then we have invoice and pay and how do we end the process by paying the uh, supplier right for the services or the goods that have been rendered now we cater to all these processes or processes for all the spend types so sap is is in a unique position right to help all of our customers to basically cover all their spend categories depending on the industry of course the, the, that they belong to uh, whether it's direct indirect services contingent workforce mro spend or travel and expense with conco now while we cater to all these processes how do you collaborate with all the trading partners that's a common unified platform which is sap business network so any process whether it is with respect to upstream sourcing contracting planning forecasting execution uh, or operational procurement or ultimately ending it with invoice and pay is all done in uh, for collaboration piece right everything is done via a common platform which is sap business network so this this helps basically collaborate with the trading partners onboard them right um, making sure that we have enough intelligence and actions provided as well as cater to uh, multiple other functions uh, when when customers have um, multi erps right with central procurement as well okay so here if you if you look at it right we have spoken in terms of providing end to end processes but i haven't really brought up any specific sap product that lies behind it right uh, so whether it's s4 hana whether it's sap ariba or sap field glass we'll make sure we'll deliver the process right um, and and uh, as a customer right you should be least worried about um, how do we how do we align it or how do we map it to different applications within sap so while while we did uh, this reengineering in terms of delivering the end to end processes right we started this effort in 1911 uh, which means november of uh, 2019 um we started with s4 cloud okay as as our base system uh the only reason is s4 cloud releases are uh, quarterly so the, the speed of development and rollout is is fast enough it is on a quarterly basis and what we did is uh, obviously at the end of the year right uh, we have an s4 on prem release uh, so all the work that goes into s4 cloud on a quarterly basis is downported to s4 on prem next release right so all the work from 1911 to 2008 is now part of um, uh, s4 on prem 2020 um so various processes uh, that have been delivered so far are with respect to buying and invoicing sourcing contracts commerce automation which is collaboration with suppliers on on eo invoice automation uh, as well as for all these processes we also have delivered the central procurement flavor right now we are if you are having a central procurement with for buying and invoicing or central procurement with contracts or sourcing and so on so forth So we started our journey in 1911. So far, like almost nine end-to-end -end, uh, processes have been delivered. The latest being in 2105 is around complex services. We'll talk about it a bit, and then also the code automation with central procurement. Out of this, all the ones that have been done until until 2011 are now or 2102 are now part of S4 on-prem um, uh, 2020 release with FPS2 as the feature pack. okay so you can also see how many uh, processes on the top are available with s4 on prem as the base system at the bottom in the blue font you could see uh, the the suit qualities that have been adopted while delivering this process so when i said we are going beyond the transactional integration uh, you look at all the suit qualities are part of delivering those end to end processes and that's where the differentiation come in terms of the next gen uh, integration for for um, adoption by all our customers okay uh if i just split that view of how many processes have been delivered into the scenario views or the category uh, aspect uh i we could say that uh, with all those 9 10 processes we are very well uh, covering the uh, indirect spend uh we are focusing on direct and contingent labor as well as services spend in next few quarters and and uh, uh years right uh, to make sure all the existing processes that are already delivered in direct and contingent as well are now delivered with the new way of integration going forward for adoption with s4 hana systems okay uh, so what are, what are some of the suit qualities that are being adopted so one of them as i uh, spoke about is is uh, consistent user experience uh, across all the applications that are part of a flow so whether it's ariba s4 hana or field glass um, 
I'm just giving some some screenshot here. You could see that the headers, the footers, the taxonomy, the icons, and everything uh, is going to be the same. And it's going to be the same for a mobile app as well uh, to get a consistent user experience. The second one is around end-to-end -end business blueprints. Uh, we have we have got a lot of uh, inputs from our customers. I would say that there's a lack of understanding on how end-to-end -end scenarios decompose into applications, right? Uh, there is a lot of uh, ask in terms of duplications that a particular functionality happens in um, application X as well as application Y, right? So what is the best practice that is recommended by SAP for adoption? Uh, they wanted clear guidance on reference architecture, integration touch points, and the technology behind it. So with end-to-end -end business process blueprints, what we are delivering is intuitive guidance for our businesses, right? Um, business users, as well as the IT teams or architects uh, within an organization so that they have a complete picture of how an end-to-end -end process is delivered, what are the underlying components, and so on and so forth. Um, it definitely helps in terms of simplifying uh, the adoption as well as getting a consistent guidance right from SAP in terms of what is the best practice scenario recommendation. Okay. Um, you could find this uh, as, as part of ACP, API Business Hub as well. I'll just show a bit of details here. Uh, a lot of uh, details around this topic have been already covered by my colleague Karsten uh, a few weeks back. Um, so uh, we'll just focus on some aspects of uh, source to pay, and I'll deep dive uh, uh, with, with those um, specific scenarios. One more aspect to understand is, is one of the strategy from SAP as part of this end-to-end -end integration is API first policy, right? So all the integrations that we have been delivering now are, are with the uh, APIs, right? So business uh, aligned APIs across different products within SAP. So that's one of the key fundamental change as well when you will adopt this new integration processes, uh, it would be all API based. Okay, let's quickly go into the demo. Okay, I hope you're able to see my screen with AP, SAP API Business Hub. So. If I just explore the business hub, right, you could see you could either explore it with respect to products or business process or different categories. Now, I could really go into products and see for S4 HANA Cloud, right? What are my integration touch points with SAP Ariba or SAP Fieldglass or business technology platform and so on and so forth? And I could look at all the different integration touch points here you will see that you have different scenarios that you could explore you could also see what all apis are available from sap s4 hana cloud that can be leveraged so there's almost 20 pages of apis that are available so you, you can imagine right on on the type of uh, master data as well as transaction data that you could extract using the apis uh, going forward the other way to look at it is I could go with a business process itself. So let me just go ahead and explore source to pay as a business process. Okay, there I'll get all the options, right? With respect to business process. Now, if I'm implementing source to pay from a cloud deployment perspective, or if I'm implementing source to pay from a hybrid deployment perspective, which is with S4 on-prem, uh, or if I'm implementing source to pay with uh, cloud for central procurement scenarios, which means I have multiple ERPs and I want to adopt central procurement deployments, or uh, I'm, I'm implementing the same processes with central procurement for hybrid environment. Let me just pick up one of them, right? Let's go ahead with um, the hybrid ones for central procurement. You could see different components or different solution uh, views. Uh, let me start with at a higher level, right? So with central procurement, right? If I just click on it, it will uh, show the overall taxonomy that we have for central procurement in delivering the end-to-end -end processes. Okay, so it's loading. Okay, let me just walk you through the other other suit qualities while while the screen comes up. Okay, um, so. 
one of them, right, is, is API Business Hub. We'll just come back to it once the browser loads. Um, the other one is Coordinated Lifecycle Management. Um, so it's all about time to value, right? And it is divided into multiple um, aspects. Uh, and, and if I look at the high level pillars, uh, it is provisioning, configuration, and monitoring, right? So the pain points uh, that we have always heard were, right, the integration scenarios of, uh, are, are pretty manual. We have to go through multiple guides. The guides for each and every application is different. Then we also have to relate it to how the integration works between different systems and so on and so forth. Obviously, the monitoring is, uh, is is also in silos, right, for each and every application, and the correlation is, is difficult. Uh, so the aspects that are covered when we deliver this end-to-end -end processes starts from the provisioning part, right? So as soon as a customer wants to adopt uh, a certain process, right, underlying components of the solutions, whether it's S4 or Ariba and uh, Field Glass would be consistently provisioned as fast as possible. The other one is automation of the integration or configuration. A lot of it would be automated using uh, SAP Cloud Integration Automation Service, wherein uh, as an architect, as a customer, you won't have to really go uh, through multiple uh, documentations, multiple guides in terms of adopting an, an scenario, right? It would be all guided and it would be semi-automated for you to just uh, adopt it and, and follow the, the recommendations via a guided workflow. Uh, the third one is around monitoring, right? How do we make sure that we can centrally collect all the distributed data from multiple applications and give you a common visualization in terms of monitoring the flow of transaction within multiple applications. So this is powered by uh, SAP Cloud uh, ALM uh, in terms of uh, having one view right, for monitoring all the processes. The other one uh, is consistent security and identity management. Uh, so all different applications, whether it's SAP, non-SAP, have different IDPs, right? Uh, um, and, and then uh, as an end user, right, if you have to log into multiple applications, you end up logging in differently with different user IDs. So the main uh, goal of consistent security and identity management is having a unique identity provider, right? So. Uh, with uh, SAP Identity and Access Management, it makes sure that once you log in, right, to a central entry point uh, for for uh, uh, from from SAP, uh, you should be automatically logged into all the applications that are required for an end-to-end -end process. L look at it as a as as a Google app, right? You log into Gmail and then you can parallelly access all the Google apps without having to log in again uh, for, to execute an end-to-end -end process. Okay. Now. There's, there's, let me just quickly go back and see if our screens are loaded. Okay, cool. Um, so I, I hope you're able to see my screen again. So I was just going through the API business hub. So I go to source to pay processes with Sarab. hybrid deployment. Yeah. Uh, now I see it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, so I'll go through the source to pay processes for um, hybrid deployment here. Here you could, if I click on the value flow diagram, you could uh, see the end-to-end -end value flow or high-level business process flow for source to pay, whether it is from source to contract or procure to receipt and invoice to pay. Oh, it's weird, it's taking a bit of time here as well. Yeah, this is a new new look and feel that we have recently released. Um, so while, while that works out, right, let me just uh, quickly go back to the demo, okay? So we, we spoke about all the different processes, right? Let me pick up one, right, uh, which is more on the sourcing end. So if I look at sourcing capability uh, and, and we look at this particular scenario, uh, I could divide it into three applications. One is SAP S4 HANA, the other one is SAP Ariba Sourcing, and the third one is uh, SAP Ariba Business Network, wherein uh, the suppliers or trading partners will log in to respond to your service uh, so sourcing bits. So the central entry point for a user here um, becomes SAP S4 HANA, uh, and I'll 
I'll not going, I'm not going to execute an end-to-end -end process here, right, or all the steps for the process, but we'll just show you certain screens, right, that I've captured during executing an end-to-end -end process that highlights the differentiators or the value proposition with respect to the next uh, way of integration. Uh, so one is around the analytics capability. So if I click on analytics uh, or a procurement overview, right, you could have a detailed uh, embedded analytics that is now available, right, with all the applications. So this is also one of the strategy wherein we provide embedded analytics, and uh, most of it would be uh, provided uh, with SAP SAC, which is Analytics Cloud as a user experience going forward. So I could just go through my procurement overview, monitor all my different procurement um, uh, KPIs, and I, I see here, right, uh, if I look at the off-contract spend uh, screen, I could see a lot of uh, uh, spend that I'm doing, right, in terms of uh, the direct materials for gears and, and uh, frames and drive fans is, is uh, uh, basically off-contract. So if I dip dive here, uh, I could see that uh, for all this materials with respect to the bike uh, communications or bike spare parts and uh, stuff. It's a lot of it is basically of contact, 100% of it, I would say. What I can then do is go ahead and monitor my uh, of contract uh, spend, right, with the materials without contracts. Uh, so this is another aspect, right, wherein now we have embedded, right, with the data that is now available with the systems. Uh, intelligence is automatically embedded. So this is more of a machine learning capability, wherein system will list down the top materials, right, from an off contract spend perspective and provide recommendations in terms of um, the different uh, KPIs. So if I look at it, if I click on the ranking for this particular material, I could see that, um, there are various ranking details that were considered while uh, uh, running a machine lear learning algorithm, right, to come up with those additions. Uh, you could also see the gross amount that is spent on this particular material, the number of suppliers, how frequently it is um, uh, ordered and stuff like that. With, with this views, right, I could just initiate the sourcing event from here. I will do an external sourcing because I want to basically push it to Ariba uh, for, for uh, more strategic uh, sourcing capabilities. I can fill in uh, the basic details or the header level details in uh, uh, S4 HANA. As soon as I submit the RFQ, it will flow to Ariba. The next thing is from, from the central user uh, entry uh, system, System, right, I could click on SAP Ariba sourcing and I would be single signed on into Ariba without having to log in. So that's one of the value adds that you could see. The other one is the look and feel when you log into Ariba sourcing scheme uh, that would be consistent across um, with the different applications. I could just quickly click on the RFQ. I could, uh, this, this comes up as a sourcing request in the system. I could deep dive into sourcing request and then uh, fill in the template or to select the template that I need to basically convert uh, into a project. I could just see that all the details from the line items have already been um, uh, tra transferred to Ariba sourcing. I'll just review them, go ahead and publish the event. The next step is if you look at logging in into Ariba network, you'll see the same consistent look and feel uh, that we spoke about uh, from a supplier point of view as well. Uh, you could see the new look and feel for Ariba network, wherein a lot of KPIs and analytics capabilities are already embedded within the front screen uh, as you log in uh, for you to take actions. Uh, you have a new workbench, right, uh, to guide you through all the open tasks and items. And uh, it becomes a central entry point for all the trading partners to execute across the processes, whether it is from sourcing that we're doing right now or from the execution end. I can just quickly uh, go to the details for proposals and questionnaires, select the sourcing project that I want to respond to, submit my bids, and then enter. So as we do this, right, what is also happening is all the integration touch points, when a bid is entered uh, from our Ariba network, when it flows back to the Ariba sourcing or from as soon as I award as a buyer in from Ariba sourcing back into the original RFQ that resides within uh, SAP S4 HANA, Everything is being done with uh, API-based integration using uh, CIG as a default uh, uh, integration layer, uh, which, which comes out of the box for all the Ariba integration. Uh, 
once the bid is awarded by the supplier, you could see the transactional flow that has happened, right? The code that was generated, the supplier quotations that came back into uh, S4, as well as the subsequent follow-on documents. In this case, a purchase contract was created uh, as part of the flow. Now, once this purchase contract is, is available, this will also uh, enable other machine learning capabilities. Now, if a, if a, if a end user is going to create a, a, a purchase order or a requisition or use a particular material or material group in terms of uh, so, uh, creating orders or, or external procurement, the system will automatically suggest the relevant contracts, right, from a machine learning capability point of view. Okay, so let's go back to. Okay, uh, the API hub is up and running. Hopefully, this works out, right? So you could see a high-level view. Uh, you could also deep dive into a certain step uh, and and go into more detailed views uh, with respect to that particular step, right? In this case, the step was um, the sourcing and contracts. So you could definitely see more uh, details around what are sourcing or contract steps or uh, uh, applications that are associated to cater to that step uh, within the API business hub. Okay, cool. Uh, so we have Ariba sourcing, we have S4 HANA cloud, we have S4 HANA because it's a central procurement landscape, right? We have multiple applications that are part of this entire process. And you could definitely see uh, a more detailed view on what step is happening and in which application. Similarly, if you if you go back uh, to, to other component views, in the component diagram, you will see what all SAP applications are part of this for end-to-end -end flow. In the data flow diagram, you could see what all transactions are flowing through all these applications um, as part of those flows. And in the in the data other data flow diagram, right, for master data and computation, you will see different components of master data, organizational data, foundation data that are part of the flow and are transferred within multiple applications. Okay. Um, so let's go back to our deck. What we what we saw in short, right, was what are the capabilities that have been released? So if I look at just source to contract as, as one of the sub uh, pillars, uh, there are multiple scope end-to-end -end processes that have been released, whether it is 4BL, 4AZ, these are the scope item numbers uh, with respect to sourcing contracts or uh, the central procurement scenarios um, and, and multiple other uh, spaces like code automation, which is tactical sourcing. Uh, a lot of our scenarios are now uh, enabled with embedded intelligence analytics, right? Across the solutions, we have embedded uh, SAC uh, within within SAP S Purana as well as Ariba Network is is um, piloted uh, last in in 2105 release, and we'll continue to do it for SAP Ariba applications and field gas applications going forward. And all of this have been adopted with uh, certain suit qualities that are part of uh, delivering this end-to-end -end process. Ultimately, it should help in a lot of business outcomes for, for the organizations, right? In terms of savings, uh, spend under management, having proactive uh, analytics, decrease in adoption cost, and, and obviously automating, right? A lot of, lot of manual activities. Similarly, from a procure to pay point of view, multiple scope items have been delivered and I've added the details of all those um, uh, scope items as well. Okay. Uh, with this, right, if I, if I look at what's the outlook for 2021 and beyond, uh, we'll focus on more suit qualities uh, and then we'll, we'll go through some of them uh, in next slides. Uh, but in general, it is more suit qualities to deliver an end-to-end -end process as well as more processes, right? So we'll focus on end-to-end -end service procurement with SAP uh, S4 plus Ariba plus Fieldglass, right? Uh, to cater to this spend category. Uh, and we'll also focus on direct spend uh, processes. Uh, we'll start with uh, subcontracting and MRP exception flows that will be delivered in next few quarters. And then we'll continue to add to more processes uh, going forward, okay? Uh, in terms of suit qualities, one of the major suit qualities that we have been working on is master data integration. Today, there are uh, multiple ways to uh, synchronize master data. And since we have manually a lot of uh, applications use CSV uh, downloads, uploads, right? Uh, but when we do this, uh, we, we have to spend a lot of manual effort, right? In terms so of uh, making this point to point uh, integrations work for master data. Uh, so what's going to happen in future is, is one domain 
main model or nine domain model data right so for example for suppliers it would be all business partners for uh, so, uh, product and uh, for for materials and services it is product master right uh, so one is the domain models would be aligned across all sap applications and there will be a central master data integration service right wherein uh, you could define the host and the target systems and at any given point of time your master data would always be in sync so this is one of the major um, aspects that would be um, catered to right when we delivered um, the the end to end processes going forward and and then that integration service would also be applicable for customers to leverage it for other third party applications uh, other one that we saw and and i spoke about was embedded intelligence as well as um, cross uh, application or cross product uh, intelligence right uh, so it's all about embedding sac within all sap applications out of the box so that's more of embedded intelligence to get you a view uh, for end user within that application with the data that resides within that application and the other one is bringing the data from all applications together for cross product uh, analytics right so this these are two things that would be part of um, the deliveries or innovations that we are working on the third one is uh, around uh, central task management uh, this is going to be delivered with sap task center um, and it's more about bringing all the workflows multiple inboxes together right uh, and having a federation of all the tasks to complete an end to end process within source to pay in in one view uh, and from here you can also deep dive into to other applications for more details if needed it's it's bringing together all your work right in terms of tasks to be completed within one app which is sap task center okay uh you could find all the road maps right with respect to the processes with respect to the apis with respect to the suit qualities that are being delivered for uh, the end to end process within source to pay uh, in sap road maps uh, explorer uh so uh, definitely you'll get uh, rolling two quarter visibility in terms of all the innovations that are coming across all the products the other one is also multiple forums for you uh, to visit uh, with its um, sap community uh, wherein you will find uh, a topic page sap integration strategy uh you can also find multiple webinars that are getting conducted so we we uh, have this uh, source to pay webinar today but there have been web various webinars that have been conducted for suit qualities and other sub processes you'll find it there uh you'll find more details on the sap integration uh, strategy white paper as well as you could educate yourself with other forums in openasap.com and sap learn okay uh having said that I'll, I'll end my presentation and let's open it up for q and a going back to my q and a screen thank you very much sarab we did indeed Perfect. get some questions into the q and a window if you mind um going into Perfect. presentation yeah. mode I'll, or, I'll, or back to your um uh, demo um yeah, but sure. you can also go through the questions to see which ones you want to address first shall we start from the top yeah okay so first question i'll i'll just go ahead and um, read it out right uh, yeah. for the benefit of others um, and then we can answer it uh, first one is from shankar um, uh, what is the road map for ariba buying and invoicing considering the sap hana uh, procurement how do we position the solution to the customers uh, so the positioning right uh, remains what we are definitely working in terms of unifying or delivering end to end a uh, procurement uh, strategy in terms of uh, bringing together all the applications right on one platform uh, but our positioning uh, today remains the same right we will have the best of capabilities from ariba buying and invoicing that would be embedded as part of procurement flows uh, so if i look at the scope items that are delivered under is um, to nb uh, for buying and invoicing 3 and for central buying and invoicing are the valid uh, scenarios um, wherein the scope has changed a bit wherein earlier we used to uh, have p2o and p2p uh, focus uh, now it is p2r that we do in buying and invoicing and then we do rest of the processes in conjunction with this for hana as a platform okay i hope this this helps um the other one is again uh, from Uh, Shankar, is there an integration between SAP Ariba and Conquer? Uh, not, not right now. Uh, Shankar, as part of the IES flows, uh, not in in the immediate roadmap, uh, but definitely one space wherein 
uh, we will look at it as, as part of our overall spend management capabilities uh, going forward. Um, another one from uh, Shankar, uh, when we say integrated intelligent suit, does it refer only to SAP S4 HANA cloud ERP or S4 HANA on-prem as well? Uh, it refers to both, right? So as I said, we started delivering the scenarios, the next gen uh, integration capabilities with cloud because it's it's uh, um, it's basically quarterly release for us, right? And then it's faster. Uh, but whatever we do in rolling four quarters, it gets downported to S4 on prem on a yearly basis as well. Yeah. Um, the other one is around uh, from from Deepika. Um, so how the process will be for procurement engine, including with a sourcing and contract. Um, so the detail level process flow Deepika are already uh, part of the the scope items that I've highlighted. Uh, so you could always visit um, SAP Best Practice Explorer, uh, key in that scope item uh, number, and you will find uh, the detailed flows uh, for each and every uh, scope item that is getting delivered, including sourcing and contracts. Okay, uh, I, I hope that helps. Uh, the other one is from uh, Pankaj. Uh, is there any process to follow to activate particular API? Uh, looking for more details on this. Uh, no, this 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 APIs are already available as open APIs, right? And then uh, if you want to leverage it for for uh, any specific purpose, but ultimately all the integration processes that are delivered are already leveraging it, uh, leveraging all these APIs uh, by default, right? So you don't have to really do um, anything in terms of leveraging APIs for end-to-end -end processes because that that's how our integration layer will will uh, adopt to it. Uh, but yeah, in case you want to uh, leverage the APIs for for um, uh, any any other use case as well, you could you could uh, visit API Business Hub, and there are multiple uh, steps to guide you on on how to uh, leverage them. Okay. Uh, the next one is from uh, Shankar. Uh, okay. How does SAP API Business Hub differ from CIG when it comes to Ariba integration? What are the other benefits of going through API Hub than going via CIG? Okay, the, the basic difference is CIG is an integration layer, Shankar, uh, which means uh, that's where you take the data from one application, map it so that the, the, the target application can understand the data. Uh, but API Business Hub is all about basically having natively built APIs in place uh, across all the applications. So CIG is still leveraged, right? CIG still remains an integration layer. Earlier, all the Ariba integrations were provided using different methods, right? Whether it is CX, uh, whether it is uh, EDI IDOC based output, or whether it is direct XML uh, uh, specific integration. Now, going forward, it would be API based, right? So CIG will leverage the API. They will call the it will call the API based data, and it will push it via APIs, right? So uh, that would be much more uh, uh, robust and 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 next gen. Uh, method of integration going forward, okay. Um, the next one again from Shankar. Uh, Shankar, it seems you have a lot of queries, so let's go through it. Uh, we could see there is no best practice flow from SAP S4 HANA to Ariba buying except to NV, yeah. Uh, does that mean buy and deliver will mainly focus in SAP S4 HANA than Ariba buying? Yes, what we're recommending is, right, uh, buying and invoicing will focus more on the guided buying aspect of it, uh, to, to be precise, and I think you've already uh, highlighted that. Uh, so instead of a P2O or P2P flow, it will be more of a P2R kind of scenario from a guided buying perspective, and then we leverage uh, the capabilities uh, within S4 HANA. But, Buying and invoicing still would be it would be tightly integrated in terms of uh, enabling both ways uh, updates uh, in terms of the process. Uh, the next one we have is from Deepika. Uh, do we have integrations to third parties on banking verification? Uh, I'm I'm not sure, uh, Deepika, but uh, obviously we'll we'll have a lot of APIs in place in case you want to leverage them for for uh, any third party integration. Okay. Uh, next one is from okay so so the, I think the question is 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 all connected uh, so banking integrations from SLP and sourcing to integrate bank component details with third parties so I, I would my answer same right so it, it, there are multiple APIs that could be leveraged here um, next one is from Pankaj uh, API cannot be modified as per requirement it's uh, 
it's rigid over cig isn't it uh, apis are, are will will give you all the details from a certain application right uh, you could still uh, enhance right and and add uh, custom uh, fields right and then you can also map them in the integration layer which is cig uh, so i i hope this answers your question pankaj Well, we had a quite a lot of questions coming in. Thanks for everyone participating. Um, you still have the chance to uh, raise your hand if you want to um, get unmuted and speak up and raise further questions. Uh, we are actually a little bit over time, um, but I think it's it, it was worth it. <laughs> I think it's always good to get open questions addressed, especially when you're around Saurabh. So thank you for your time and thanks for everyone uh, for your patience. And, no problem. And thank you. Thank you all for, uh, yeah. Thank you all for like asking so many questions and then and shows, it just shows the interest that you have right on the topic. Uh, and I'm sorry for the technical glitch in between. Uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure we could have avoided it, uh, but sorry for that uh, interruption. Uh, for for a few minutes. No worries. Um, okay, then I'd say uh, we're at the end of the call. We don't have further questions coming in, which is good. <laughs> and um, if there are any further questions coming up, uh, feel free to post them in SAP community. Have a good rest of day, everyone. Bye. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks a lot.